We have created this podcast to transform the pain we've endured over the last several years into helping other troubled teens and their loved ones. Mm -hmm. So they want to escape this reality and that's a very easy way to do it. Today, that's what people are searching for, the highest potency. Nicotine does alter your mind. Oh, yes. As much as we think it doesn't because you can smoke and drive and you can smoke and work. It's a trip because you're traveling through your consciousness, your psyche. Joey has relapsed and gone back to his dad's. It's been a pretty horrible day around here. In my little circle where I grew up, the alcohol consumption is to an abusive point. Mm. There's been a real emphasis on how we can use harm reduction services in relation to opioids, including syringe service programming. We called it speed back then. The first time I tried it, I was hooked. That's what I mainly focus on is helping parents get their peace of mind back to repair their relationship with their child and help them to start living a fulfilling life again. It feels like this black darkness that is in your body. And then he admitted he started drinking. And then things just have started to escalate, which they do. When you have an addiction, it's very easy for things to just go farther than you think they're going to go. It's a struggle. And I want you guys to know that it's not easy. And I, I really want to show you what the reality is of a relapse. And knowing I was going to meet my birth father and that he was going to meet his son for the first time at 85. And the relationship already, we can tell from letters and phone calls, it's going to be fantastic. We would start with appreciations and almost always they would say, I'm appreciative to have survived the weekend and be alive. If you can't keep them safe, a hospital will. And that's their whole job. I wound up getting encouragement to move into a sober living house, which I did, which was in the Oxford house. Well, what made me want to get a job is to get the fuck out of my dad's house. They just want tools or they want to learn how to do self-care or they want to hear something that inspires them. I was a victim, but I don't have to keep being a victim. But the beauty is the brain is pliable. It can heal and it can change. You start to feel nausea. You learn how to manage the nausea with hot showers and all of that. Their kids are coming out to them. The parents are saying, I love you no matter what. And then the conversation ends. I did connect with my depression in a big, big way. And I want to talk about it. It really wasn't until I got into my somatic experiencing training that my body decided to let me know that I had stored up trauma. Why this otherwise bright, capable person is mm-hmm. struggling. Just mm-hmm. to completely relax and let go for a time, to release some of that stress and some of that burden and of you know always holding on to that responsibility. What my son has taught me is that I can't react. Like I have to just listen and try to stay flat and calm because when I react, he shuts down. I knew that still didn't fit, but I hoped it would Mm -hmm. fit enough that it would suffice never stepping into, you know, my true identity. It is hard to scientifically corroborate the primal wound, like my mom says in the film, but no one's going to okay those kind of studies. As an autistic person, it's kind of how I enter the room, but I don't know another (laughs) way to be. So it's great to have people that are willing to be receptive. Adolescents, they push the envelope. Yeah. They're going to experiment on something. And we just tap lightly and um, just noticing anything that's going on while you're just tapping. I didn't know that I was only going to have 21 years with my daughter. And I look back on the way I have lived the last seven years as her mom, and I am so grateful. You have to deal with depersonalization and derealization. And those can very easily make life not feel real. Amen on behalf of the last and the least, on behalf of the anxious, depressed, and unseen. And those are our implicit memories that are driving us. And it's stored in our bodies. 
Every child's most basic need is to feel a sense of belonging and significance. And once the meth hit, it, it grabbed a hold of me and it wouldn't let go. And I finally went to this, this other place where somebody made me feel seen and made me feel accepted and like I wasn't a piece of shit. This is Joey's life, not Jim's life, not your life, not my life. Mm -hmm. And so we get to kind of witness that, you know, the good and the bad. But it has become much easier to get access to, you know, very high quality, very high potency forms of cannabis that were much more difficult to get your hands on before. I wasn't motivated to do anything. Mm -hmm. I was just sleeping through each day, trying to get through each day like that. Clairvoyancy is more or less a super hyper awareness with your intuitive awareness. Pretty much every consequence that you can suffer from an addiction, I, I did. Social anxiety and then alongside that was academic anxiety and perfectionism. You're in this deep cycle of negativity and all that, mm -hmm. okay? Let's not ignore it, but let's see how we can change it and look at it from a different way. Not only are we not realizing our best life, realizing more peace and joy in our life, we're also causing damage out there without being conscious. We all have to deal with our own traumas before we inflict trauma on others. Because yeah. then we're responsible. Just be open, like, come yeah. on. It's, it's time to give the freedom mm -hmm. to anyone, you know. I had also had manic episodes, but I didn't recognize them as bad or anything. So I didn't really tell him the whole story. That's a well-worn groove in your brain that you've thought it so many times that it believes it's a fact. When you identify your why, you can do anything you want to do. 